and females have the same average IQ, but the distribution of males' IQ scores is wider and more variable than the distribution of females' IQ scores, which means that there are more males than females at both the very top and the very bottom of the IQ range. Hedges and Noel, 1995, Lakin, 2013, Way ETAL, 2012. Some of this difference is certainly too b Scores is wider and more variable than the distribution of females' IQ scores, which means that there are more males than females at both the very top and the very bottom of the IQ range. Hedges and Noel, 1995, Lakin, 2013, Way ETAL, 2012. Some of this difference is certainly due to the different ways in which boys and girls are socialized. Whether any of this difference is due to innate biological differences between males and females remains a hotly debated issue in psychology, Sessi ETAL, 2009, Nisbet ETAL, 2012, Spelka, 2005. Image with the following description, a graph shows the percentage of people who score in each interval of IQ scores. Figure 9.16 The curve of intelligence This graph shows the percentage of people who score in each range of IQ. The graph shows a bell curve, with eight segments representing the percentages of people scoring in each interval. They are as follows. 0.1%, between IQ scores of 40 and 55. 2%, between IQ scores of 55 and 70. 14%, between IQ scores of 70 and 85. 34%, between IQ scores of 85 and 100. 34%, between IQ scores of 100 and 115. 14%, between IQ scores of 115 and 130. 2%, between IQ scores of 130 and 145. 0.1%, between IQ scores of 145 and 160. Image with the following description, a portrait shows Vincent van Gogh. The artist Vincent van Gogh was the iconic tortured genius. But data suggest that low intelligence, not high intelligence, is most strongly associated with mental illness. Those of us who occupy the large middle of the intelligence distribution tend to have a number of misconceptions about those who live at the extremes. For example, movies often portray the tortured genius as a person who is brilliant, creative, misunderstood, despondent, and more than a little bit weird. But, in fact, people with very high intelligence are less susceptible to mental illness than are people with very low intelligence, Decker and Kut, 2003, Didn't ETAL, 2012, Walker ETAL, 2002. Just as intelligence seems to buffer people against physical illness, so it seems to buffer people against mental illness as well. Gifted children are rarely gifted in all departments, but instead have gifts in particular domains such as math, language, or music. Actor ETAL, 1996, Makel ETAL, 2016. Because gifted children tend to be single gifted, they also tend to be single minded, displaying a rage to master the domain in which they excel. Some research suggests that what most clearly distinguishes gifted children from their less gifted peers is the sheer amount of time they spend engaged in their domain of excellence, Erickson and Charnas, 1999. Their ability to devote themselves passionately to a single activity may help explain why gifted children so often become high-achieving adults, Lubinsky, 2016. On the other end of the intelligence spectrum are people with intellectual disabilities, about 70% of whom are male. Two of the most common causes of intellectual disability are Down syndrome, caused by the presence of a third copy of chromosome 21, and fetal alcohol syndrome, caused by a mother's excessive alcohol use during pregnancy. The intellectual disabilities associated with these two causes tend to be quite general, and people who have them typically show impaired performance on most or all cognitive tasks. Perhaps the greatest myth about the intellectually disabled is that they are unhappy. The fact is that nearly all people with Down syndrome are happy with their lives, like who they are, and like how they look, Scott Co. ETAL, 2011b. People with intellectual disabilities face many challenges, but being misunderstood by those who don't know them is among the most difficult. Image with the following description, a photo shows Isabella Springmole Tejeda, M the, w and syndrome are happy with their lives, like who they are, and like how they look, Scott Co. ETAL, 2011b. People with intellectual disabilities face many challenges, but being misunderstood by those who don't know them is among the most difficult. Image with the following description, a photo shows Isabella Springmole Tejeda. Isabella Springmole Tejeda is a fashion designer who has Down syndrome. Her work has been showcased during London Fashion Week, and the BBC voted her one of the 100 most inspiring and innovative women of 2016. Group Differences in Intelligence in the early 1900s, Stanford University professor Louis Terman improved on Binet and Simon's work and produced the intelligence test now known as the Stanford, Binet Intelligence Scale. Among the things this test revealed was that whites performed better than non-whites. Are the inferior races really inferior, or are they merely unfortunate in their lack of opportunity to learn? 
German asked, and then answered unequivocally, their dullness seems to be racial, or at least inherent in the family stocks from which they come, German, 1916, pages 91 to 92. A century later, German's words make most of us cringe. But which words are the cringe-worthy ones? German claimed that, 1, intelligence is influenced by genes, 2, members of some racial groups score better than others on intelligence tests, and, 3, members of some racial groups score better than others on intelligence tests because of differences in their genes. Virtually all modern scientists who study intelligence consider Terman's first two claims to be well-established facts, intelligence is influenced by genes, and some groups do perform better than others on intelligence tests. But Terman's third claim that differences in genes are the reason some groups outperform others is a controversial conjecture that has been the subject of acrimonious debate. What does science have to tell us about it? Before answering that question, let's be clear about one thing, group differences in intelligence are not inherently problematic. No one is troubled by the possibility that this year's winners of the Nobel Prize are on average more intelligent than this year's winners of the Super Bowl, or that people who graduate from college are on average more intelligent than people who never attended school. On the other hand, most of us are troubled by the possibility that people of one gender, race, or nationality may be more intelligent than people of another. Intelligence is a valuable trait, and it doesn't seem fair for some people to have more of it than others simply because of an accident of birth or geography. But fair or not, some people do. Women routinely outscore men on tests that require rapid access to and use of semantic information, production, and comprehension of complex prose, fine motor skills, and perceptual speed or verbal intelligence. Men routinely outscore women on tests that require transformations in visual or spatial memory, certain motor skills, spatio-temporal responding, and fluid reasoning in abstract mathematical and scientific domains, Halpern ETAL, 2007, Nisbet ETAL, 2012. Asians routinely outscore whites, who routinely outscore blacks, on standard intelligence tests, Nisar ETAL, 1996, Nisbet ETAL, 2012. Indeed, group differences on intelligence tests are among the most thoroughly documented findings in psychology, Suzuki and Valencia, 1997, p. 1104. Although the average difference between groups is considerably less than the average difference within groups, there is no doubt that some groups outperform others and the only important question is why? Tests and test takers. One possibility is that there is something wrong with the tests. In fact, the earliest intelligence tests did ask questions whose answers were more likely to be known by members of one group, usually white Europeans, than by members of another. For example, one of Binet and Simon's questions was this, when anyone has offended you and asks you to excuse him, what ought you to do? Binet and Simon were looking for answers such as accept the apology like a gentleman or explain why it is insufficient. Answers such as challenge him to a fight or demand three goats would have been counted as wrong despite the fact that in some cultures those answers would have been right. Early intelligence tests were clearly culturally biased. But testing has come a long way in a century, and one would have to look hard to find such blatantly biased questions on a modern intelligence test, Suzuki and Valencia, 1997. Of course, even when test questions are unbiased, testing situations may not be. For example, studies show that African-American students, but not European-American students, perform more poorly on tests if they are asked to report their race at the top of the answer sheet, presumably because doing so leads them to feel anxious about confirming racial stereotypes, Steele and Aronson, 1995, and anxiety naturally interferes with test performance, Revtal, 2009. Stereotype threat is the fear of confirming the negative beliefs that others may hold, Aronson and Steele, 2004, Schmader ETAL, 2008, Walton and Spencer, 2009, and it can influence people's test performances. When Asian American women are reminded of their gender, they perform poorly on tests of mathematical skill if they are aware of stereotypes suggesting that women can't do math, but when the same women are instead reminded of their ethnicity, they perform well on such tests if they are aware of stereotypes suggesting that Asians are especially good at math, Gibson ETAL, 2014, She ETAL, 1999. Findings such as these remind us that the situations in which intelligence tests are administered can affect members of different groups differently and may cause group differences in performance that do not reflect group differences in actual intelligence. See the real world, racism and intelligence testing. The real world. Racism and intelligence testing. In the 19th century, Binet and Simon argued that children would be much better served if schools used an objective test to measure students' intelligence rather than allowing teachers, who might harbor a variety of preconceptions and prejudices, to make subjective evaluations of the children. In the early 20th century, however, intelligence tests acquired a bad reputation because they were used to justify some of the most heinous forms of discrimination, including the forced sterilization of poor and uneducated people who tended not to score well. Today, many people still consider intelligence testing and racism to be synonymous. But history is irony. 
For decades, the state of Florida eschewed intelligence tests and instead used the subjective evaluations of teachers and parents to decide which children would be admitted to the gifted and talented programs in public schools. Minority children were severely underrepresented in these programs, so, in 2005, Florida decided to try something new or, more correctly, something old, it began to require that all second graders take a screening test and that those who scored well take an actual intelligence test. The schools then used the results of the intelligence tests, rather than subjective evaluations, to determine which children would be placed in gifted and talented programs. What happened? The intelligence test did precisely what Binet and Simon had designed it to do, it eliminated the all-too-human prejudices that naturally bedevil subjective evaluations. In just a few years, the number of black students admitted to gifted and talented programs had increased by a remarkable 74%, and the number of Hispanic students admitted had increased by an even more remarkable 118%, Card and Giuliano, 2016. Unfortunately, this story does not have a happy ending. In 2010, the state of Florida instituted a series of budget cuts that forced schools to discontinue the use of intelligence tests and to rely once again on subjective evaluations. As you might expect, the number of minority children admitted to gifted and talented programs plummeted. Intelligence tests, it seems, are neither good nor bad. They are tools and like all tools, they can be used to make the real world a worse place or a better one. Image with the following description, a photo shows four children of different ethnicity studying in a classroom. Environments and genes. Biases in the testing situation may explain some of the between-group differences in intelligence test scores, but there is broad agreement among scientists that environment also plays a major role. For example, African-American children have lower birth weights, poorer diets, higher rates of chronic illness, and poorer medical care, attend worse schools, and are three times more likely than European-American children to live in single-parent households, Acevedo Garcia ETAL, 2007, National Center for Health Statistics, 2016A. Given the vast differences between the SES of European Americans and African Americans, it isn't very surprising that African Americans score, on average, 10 points lower on IQ tests than do European Americans. What explains group differences like this one? So far, scientists have not found any evidence to suggest that genes explain these differences, but they have found evidence that makes such an explanation unlikely. For example, the average African American has about 20% European genes, yet individuals who have more of these genes are no smarter than those who have fewer, which is not what we'd expect if European genes made people smart, Leyland, 1973, Nisbet ETAL, 2012, Scar ETAL, 1977. Similarly, African American children and multiracial children have different amounts of European genes, yet when they are adopted into middle class families, their IQs don't differ, more, 1986, which is once again not what we'd expect if European genes made people smart. These facts do not prove that there is no genetic basis of the between group differences in intelligence, but they do make that possibility less plausible. Unless researchers can isolate genes that are clearly connected to intelligence and then show that they are more prevalent in one group than another, most scientists are unlikely to embrace a genetic explanation of between-group differences in intelligence. Improving intelligence Intelligence can be improved by money, for example, and by education. But most people can't just snap their fingers and become wealthier, and education takes time. Is there anything that average parents can do to raise their child's IQ? Researchers analyzed the data from all the high-quality scientific studies on this question that have been performed over the past few decades, Protsko ETAL, 2013, and they found four things that seem to reliably raise a child's intelligence. Supplementing the diets of pregnant women and neonates with long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, substances found in breast milk, appears to raise children's IQ by up to four points, Boutwell ETAL, 2018. Enrolling low SES infants in so-called early educational interventions tends to raise their IQ by about 6 points. Reading to children in an interactive manner raises their IQ by about 6 points. Sending children to preschool raises their IQ by about 6 points. Image with the following description, a photo shows a mother teaching her child to play guitar.